Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, the show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I will show you how to install the Pinwolfer GT JJP Super Kit on an early JJP system. So grab your tools and let's get going. Here you can see the packaging for all the items included in the Super Kit. Each box is individually labeled for easy reference. The Super Kit includes the Pinwolfer amplifier, a 3D printed amp housing with hardware, a wiring harness, expander board and wires, a power board, speaker wire connectors, and some zip ties. The kit also includes a cabinet speaker, mounting ring adapter, playfield glass anti-rattle tape, and mounting hardware. If you would like detailed instructions on how to install your kit, go to pinwolfer.com, create an account, select downloads, then pick your system and download the installation instructions. To begin this installation, make sure you have access to both sides of the pinball cabinet. Before you begin any work, make sure to unplug the pinball machine. With the pinball machine unplugged, open the coin door, remove the lockdown bar, close the coin door, and remove the playfield glass. Since we will be raising the playfield, place a small towel or blanket on the back box to avoid scratching it. If you have cabinet protectors, go ahead and install them at this time and then fully raise the playfield. Now open the coin door and feed the Pinwolfer wiring harness through the coin door opening and down the right side of the pinball cabinet. Leave about two feet of cabling hanging out of the coin door. If you purchase the amp mounting bracket, use the included hardware or Velcro to mount the bracket inside the coin door. Pinwolfer cautions against mounting the amp to the side of the pinball cabinet. If you choose to mount the amp bracket with Velcro, make sure to remove the amp from the pinball machine before transporting it. Now it is time to install the power board. Loosen the two screws on the top of the enclosure lid and remove the covering from the case. Here is a look at the connector at J110, which we need to remove in order to install the power board. Remove the connector and plug it into the Pinwolfer power board. Make sure you have a little slack in the connector to properly mount the power board. The connector is keyed, so be sure to line up the connector properly. Now install the power board on J110. The power board is keyed as well, so be sure to line up the pins properly. Here is two pictures showing how it should look once properly installed. Now feed the Pinwolfer Harness 2-pin power connector with the red and black wires through the hole at the rear of the enclosure. Plug the two pin connector into the power board you just installed and route the cables so they don't get pinched by the enclosure lid. Here is how the power board should look with the two connectors properly attached. Now route the green ground wire down the side of the enclosure. Remove the screw holding on the wire loom Place the ground wire in direct contact with the enclosure and then remount the wire loom. Here is how it should look with the ground wire installed. At this time, lower the playfield and rest it on the end of the support brackets. Next, unplug the RCA connectors from J6, J7, and J8 on the back of the enclosure. Plug in the three RCA connectors from the Pinwolfer kit harness. The red and black wires should be on the top, the white and black wires should be in the middle, and the green and black wires at the bottom. Here is a picture of how it should look when they are properly installed. Now plug the 5-pin connector and the 2-pin connector from the Pinwolfer RCA harness into the expander board, and then plug the 3.5mm cable from the amp wiring harness into the expander board. Use the included double-sided sticky tape to mount the expander board to the back of the enclosure. Here is a picture of how it should look once properly installed. Next, take the red and white RCA cables from the back box speakers and connect them to the amp wiring harness. The red RCA connector should be connected to the cable labeled right speaker and the white RCA connector should be connected to the cable marked left speaker. Now it is time to replace the cabinet speaker. Use your hex driver to remove the screws holding on the speaker. As you can see here, there are a lot of wires in the cabinet, so be careful not to unplug anything accidentally when you remove the speaker. 
Pinwolfer also recommends removing the speaker grill so it doesn't rattle during gameplay. With the speaker grill removed, grab the Pinwolfer speaker adapter ring and install it using the screws you previously removed. Be sure to add a washer to each screw before mounting the ring. You also want to make sure that no wires are getting pinched underneath the adapter ring before you tighten it down. Here is a look at the adapter ring once it's properly installed. Now we need to remove the RCA adapter from the old cabinet speaker. Use some wire cutters and clip the wires close to the solder points on the speaker. Next, use some wire strippers and remove about a quarter inch of wire insulation from each wire. Grab the speaker connectors that came with the pinwoofer kit and mount the red connector to the red wire and the blue connector to the black wire. Use a pair of pliers or a crimper and pinch the wire in the connector. Tug on them gently to make sure the wires are secure. Here is how it should look with the speaker connectors installed. Now connect the red connector to the positive terminal and the blue connector to the negative terminal. I would recommend holding the tabs while sliding on the connectors. Here is how it should look with the speaker connectors installed properly. Head back over to the speaker adapter ring and place one washer on each threaded post, then grab the new speaker and mount it to the new adapter ring you installed. Take your time and line up the holes properly. You do not want to punch a hole in the speaker by mistake. Position the speaker with the mounting tabs positioned facing the back of the enclosure as seen here, then add one washer and one lock nut to each threaded post. Double check that no wires are getting pinched between the speaker and the ring, and then use your hex driver to tighten down the lock nuts. Next, take the RCA cable from the cabinet speaker you just installed and connect it to the wire labeled SUB from the Pinwolfer Amp wiring harness. Now take the zip ties that came with the Pinwolfer kit and clean up the wiring, and use a pair of wire cutters to clip the excess from the zip ties. I would recommend leaving a little bit of slack in the wires just in case you need to move something around. With the wires tidied up, go ahead and fully raise the playfield. Grab the lid for the enclosure, install it, and tighten down the screws to secure the lid. Now it is time to plug in the amp. Connect the Molex connector from the wiring harness to the amp. Plug in the red and white RCA cables, then plug in the power cable. I like to set the gain on the amp to around the 2 or 3 o'clock position and all the other knobs to the 12 o'clock position. Place the amp in the mounting bracket at this time and feed the excess wires towards the middle of the pinball cabinet. Here is how it should look when it's properly plugged in. Next, completely lower the playfield, remove the cabinet protectors if you use them, close the coin door, and reinstall the playfield glass and lockdown bar. If you intend to use the anti-rattle tape, install it at this time on the playfield glass. My glass fits very snug in the channeling, so I did not need to install the tape. If you use the anti-rattle tape, install it on one side of the glass, install the glass to test fit it, and if needed, add the strip to the other side of the playfield glass. If the channeling for the playfield glass is tight, and you add tape to both sides, it is possible to seize the playfield glass in the channel. With the glass installed, pull out the white pin on the inside of the coin door so the game will boot properly with the door open, and remove the amp from the mounting bracket and rest it on the playfield glass. If you used a blanket or towel on the back box, remove it at this time, plug in the pinball machine, and then turn it on. Dialing in the amp settings is just as important as the installation process. Be sure to check out my other video regarding how to dial in the amp settings. A link is provided in the description. The video covers how to adjust the amp as well as the auto mute feature. You can also check out the blog on pinwoofer.com for recommended settings for various machines. Here's a look at the settings I like to start with. I place all the knobs at the 12 o'clock position except the gain knob, which I place in the 2 to 3 o'clock position. I set the coin door volume to 25 before dialing in the amp. Make sure to dial in the amp with the playfield glass installed. Once you find some settings that you like, 
Be sure to share a picture with Pinwolfer so they can add it to the database to help others dial in their machines. Once you find some settings that you like, place the amp back in the mounting bracket and close the coin door. If you move the pinball machine to gain access to the cabinet, push it back into place at this time. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball, and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball and click the subscribe button. We can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.